Hey, Measuring Hero, Jay here. Uh, today, I thought uh, it would be a good idea to uh, talk a little bit about PyWeb because for me, it's, uh, it's a software that uh, I know about, but I really don't know much about. So I thought we would uh, bring in an expert uh, to teach us about it. So on the call with us today is Josh Smokovitz. Uh, Josh, how are you? Thanks for coming. Hey, Jay. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, I appreciate uh, appreciate you uh, uh, joining us. Uh, and uh, uh, what's cool about uh, me and Josh is um, we are not only uh, both American, but we both uh, came from uh, worked out of the uh, uh, U.S. office or the Minneapolis office, but never together. So um, yeah, it, it was absolutely crazy that uh, uh, that we ended up uh, uh, in Allen. Uh, years later, but I know that most people have, have said, Hey, you know, you're moving to Germany, you know, Josh, or have you been hanging out with Josh? I'm like, I don't know this guy. So it was, uh, uh, I appreciated it when you stopped up, uh, and, uh, stopped me in the, uh, um, in the lunch line <laughs> and said hi. Yeah. It's pretty crazy that, um, kind of maybe speaks to the, the topic for today and probability and statistics and definitely a low probability that, two bearded guys in America that studied at the same university, worked at the same company, ended up moving to some really small town on the Schwäbische um, Ostelb and um, never ended up meeting each other except for chance outside of the cafeteria one day. So, Well, that was the first time we met. And the second time we met was in Ulm because <clears throat> like a good American, when uh, Kelly and I were uh, getting ready to uh, go to our first Volksfest, uh, of course, I have to buy lederhosen, so we went to Ulm to go buy lederhosen, and I was really happy looking for the different shops and finding the first, like, legit shop to get really good lederhosen, and, and who do we run into when we walk in? There's you, and not just browsing, but being full-on fitted, you know, <laughs> I mean, to the nines. Yeah, if that first meeting uh, by chance wasn't a low probability, then that second one in Ohm was definitely a statistical outlier. But you know what? You got to look good here when you're underway, and, and that means a proper <laughs> pair of lederhosen. Yeah, yeah. You I, I feel like you have to live here to understand that, but you're absolutely right, and we know that. So, again, Josh, thank you for joining us. It's, it's, it's really my honor to have you uh, come visit and explain to me a little bit about uh, PyWeb, because to be honest with you, to me, PyWeb was a software that I um, offered to my customers when I was selling Owen specs uh, to, um, to generate really good looking reports at the end. But I, I know it's uh, so much more than that. So can you spend a few minutes and, and, and explain to us what, what's PyWeb? Yeah, absolutely, Jay. So that's um, a very good question. And I think it's one that's quite often asked by a lot of our customers is they have maybe a little bit of experience with it inside of Calypso or Caligo, or um, maybe the customer um, doesn't have any Zeiss machines, but they actually know PyWeb. And um, what's the definition of the, the actual software and what's it actually do? And um, sometimes the, the definition is actually different for the end, uh, different end users. Um, some maybe more interested in looking at and preparing really nice reports, like you mentioned with a, with a CAD model in it, uh, maybe interactive um, form plots, um, but maybe other customers are really looking at it and using it for the statistical capabilities of the software. So PyWeb in a whole is pretty um, big function um, uh, area where we can offer solutions for small customers, maybe that have one Zeiss machine and it comes free with the software to maybe prepare some really nice looking reports, um, all the way up to um, large international corporations that are basically storing all of their data from Zeiss machines and um, may maybe inspection devices that aren't Zeiss machines in one database and preparing statistical analysis, KPI analysis um, across their entire production. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it's 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 really a scalable solution that can you know start from you know, smaller companies just with their uh, uh, with a Zeiss machine to full enterprise you know solutions pulling in data from all sorts of places. But I, I mean, but, but but let's talk about that data. Is that uh, does it have to come in in a certain format, or what, what do those things look like? Yeah, very good question, Jay. So that's one of our. I would say a really big challenge for the customer as well 
is um, in, in any given production environment, you have a lot of different inspection devices. And um, in a lot of instances, um, the customer has the requirement for inspection devices that maybe aren't, um, that, that Zeiss offers no product um, in that area. And um, for, for PyWeb to be successful, we have to offer a solution to the customer that can basically really read in a lot of different data formats, um, whether it's from, very simply put, manual inspection data, all the way up to more inline inspection data where, where uh, maybe thousands of parts are getting measured per day. Um, and basically all the extra information that comes with that from um, images and to point clouds and um, to CAD models to uh, basically all different types of data. Okay, so, I mean, it sounds like we can pull data in from different uh, places. We can pull in from, you know, just a single size piece of equipment or from all over the place. And I'm guessing the data sets look really different. They can be, um, you know, like you said, single single data points or these, I can imagine like with a CT scanner, there's huge data clouds or with structured light systems or laser line scanners, you get these ginormous uh, 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 data sets that can be massive, you know, is there a way, a strategy for us to, to deal with that? Yeah, that, um, that presents quite a few challenges today. It kind of speaks to, I guess you would call maybe this evolution of data from more simple visual checks that maybe um, took place maybe years ago is the part, you know, good or bad. And um, that's technically a data point. Um, and then as we see inspection technology mature and be and, and get more complex, for example, moving from a lot of manual gauges like calipers to maybe um, CMMs um, generating information like flatness or roughness um, up to these CT um, devices where they're not only generating maybe um, measurement results such as a diameter with a nominal actual value and a tolerance, but they're also generating really complex data like defect information. Are there inclusions in the part um, that maybe we can't see uh, uh, visibly, but maybe that have an um, impact later in the production? And um, with this evolution of data, basically goes hand in hand that the customer also expects a solution to be able to work with that data. So we've in a, implemented um, over the years um, and continue to do so, um, some pretty innovative stuff in, the, in, in that direction. For example, quite simply put, you spoke to it as well, these very large CT data sets. Um, if we maybe make a little bit more of a simple comparison, um, when we look at just a regular image, we can look at the different image formats and maybe we look at like a raw image format, like a bitmap. Um, where it really is just a big matrix of information of numbers between zero and 255. And then we can um, look at how the, the, that technology has evolved as well to maybe compress that information, for example, into a JPEG file. Um, it's quite a lot smaller. Um, you lose some information, but basically the same information comes to the end user. And then you're able to uh, basically maybe use it easier in everyday applications, like being able to send it in an email and sending maybe a few kilobyte file instead of multiple megabytes. And we kind of do the same thing with um, some data sets as well. For CT, we have the ability to um, take a 10 gigabyte point cloud and then maybe reduce it to one to, to a few megabytes. And we can do that inside of a few seconds and basically send that information instead of this raw information onto the database, which saves a lot of space for the customer. Um, but then we also have um, developed additional tools that the customer can look at this complex information maybe and do time analysis or look at this information and consume it in an easier way as well. Sure, sure. So if, I, if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, there's two aspects to this that are equally important, right? There's on, on the customer and there's understanding uh, the potential uses uh, for the data, what they're going to do with it, uh, uh, and being able to present that to them in a way that's meaningful for them. Uh, and then also being able to take the data in all of its sizes and formats and being able to, uh, in a rational way, uh, 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 reduce it if it needs reducing or just store the bits that are needed uh, in order to support 
what uh, the customer needs, you know, to make a decision. And, and, and what it's really sounding to me like, it's, it's not, it's not a receptacle for data. It's really a, an understand, really a relationship with the customer that we understand what you need and we understand what you're giving us and help us kind of get you there, right? Exactly right, because it's also a question of scale, right? If we develop the software that um, basically is just a, a, a database that holds all the data that we throw into it, and um, we start using it in applications where the customer is um, maybe has inline CT devices, while well, they might be generating um, a, t a 10 gigabyte point cloud, but maybe they're doing this a thousand times a day. And the question is, okay, how would the customer effectively use that data at a later time um, with just the extraordinary amount of data? Um, so we pay particular attention to um, offering a solution that um, works in a, a very wide variety of uh, customer applications, also with um, large amounts of data being sent to the database. Yeah, is, is that, I mean, I, I can imagine that uh, uh, working with big point cloud data and, 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 and from uh, inline CT process, that, that's gotta be hard to visualize, you know, is that, is that hard to use or, or get access to your data? Um, yeah, that's the, basically after we implement all of these tools that take care of compression of the data, and then we also have tools to basically maintain the database, um, to really only, like you said, um, store and save the information um, that is relevant for the different points of production. For example, you may be interested in doing a long-term statistical analysis and therefore you would maybe use your general characteristics like diameter um, and distance and then you'd be basically storing that information for a long time. Um, but then your point cloud information, maybe you're only keeping that information for a few weeks and the database will basically maintain itself and then delete unneeded data. And that's, of course, configured by the user, um, which data they actually want to save after a while as well. Okay, so that sounds pretty intuitive that it intelligently kind of understands based on what you want to accomplish. Uh, uh, seems e the, 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 the platform will kind of make decisions on our behalf and, and, and help us get to, get to the goal without us having to actually deal with it, right? Well, the, the, the question is, I think every application, every customer application is different. And um, we are not the ones to say how a solution should be implemented. We typically work with our customer to first identify maybe what are their pain points. Um, maybe it's the implementation of new technology. Maybe it's the consolidation of data in between um, different facilities, or maybe it's um, replacing an old system that was developed in-house that's not sustainable on new Windows architecture. And what we try to do is listen to those, uh, those problems that the customer has and then really try to work with the customer to develop a solution around that and then give our suggestions and then see if, if PyWeb is, is a good fit for the application. That's great. So it really, it really is a relationship, right? It really is, is uh, taking what the customer is good at, uh, which is their process, and what we're good at, which is uh, um, you know, measuring and you know uh, uh, storing the data and working with the data, and just kind of marrying the two. And and uh, uh, I, I like that philosophy. You know, not just we're a software provider or we're a machine provider, but we are really a true partner. It, it, it's it's a nice philosophy. It sounds like that that we take kind of with this with this uh, uh, suite, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. We put a lot of effort in um, the ease of use of the software to make sure that the customer has a solution that maybe not only has every function um, that they require, but we put a lot of attention and detail into making um, processes easier for a customer, whether it's designing reports, making it more intuitive, um, and also the consumption of large data sets as well, and then maintaining those. Great, great. Well, Josh, I, I think... We can clearly just sit and chit chat for uh, an hour, uh, but uh, maybe um, as we go deeper into the subject, uh, I might have more questions. Uh, uh, someone might reach out to us and have more questions. Uh, would you be available to come back if uh, uh, and have a deeper discussion? Absolutely, Jay. It'd be my pleasure. Oh man, that'd be great. So I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us uh, from uh, across town over there, and. Um, 
For you out there, thank you also for continuing to join us. Uh, we hope you continue to stay healthy, and we'll see you next Thursday.